Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Marcus, and I'm the director of Colorado and state economic transition policy for the Blue Green Alliance. The Blue Green Alliance unites labor unions and environmental organizations to solve today's environmental challenges in ways that create and maintain good quality jobs and build a clean, thriving, equitable economy. We have coalitions of environmental and labor partners here in Colorado and in, other, in several other states and in Washington, DC. We are here today to re, re, uh, release the results of a poll and to translate the national plan Congress is debating to something tangible and important to Colorado and Coloradoans. Uh, earlier this month, Heart Research conducted a poll of Colorado vote, voters with Blue Green Alliance. Uh, the results of this survey, I will paste them into the, the chat here shortly. Um, they can be found on Blue Green Alliance's website, bluegreenalliance.org slash CO survey. Um, this uh, new survey of voters in Colorado reveals strong support for the Build Back Better plan. The broad economic infrastructure, uh, care economy, and climate crisis package currently being considered by Congress. Um, Building Back Better is America's path forward toward a clean, thriving, and equitable future. We need a recovery for America, by America, making the products we need to repair our nation's infrastructure and rebuild manufacturing in the United States. Uh, the results of this poll showed that the majority of Coloradoans are in favor of, the, of Build Back Better, a strong majority. The plan totals three and a half million, a trillion dollars, and it is spread out over a 10-year period. The plan would be mostly paid for by raising ta taxes on corporations and the wealthy. Those surveyed in Colorado said that the following are important reasons to pass the Build Back Better plan. First, 69% of, of Coloradoans said that helping rebuild the middle class with jobs that pay enough so that people can support their families is a high priority. Uh, second, 69% said creating millions of new, good paying jobs for working people in communities across the country in fields that are important to America's economic future as high value, as high importance. And third, 65% of Coloradoans said bringing good jobs back to the United States by making sure more of the products we use in America are made in the United States. This survey shows strong support for policies that will bring good jobs back to the United States. For example, as our nation makes the investments needed to repair and modernize our infrastructure, Voters believe that investment would support workers and jobs in the U.S. by requiring that the products used in, uh, used in projects are American made. Additionally, the survey illustrates that voters want the U.S. to invest in manufacturing, retooling and modernizing our factories uh, to produce the cutting edge technologies that will be in demand in the clean economy. Uh, Colorado voters also consider the Build Back Better plan a means to improve the health and safety of our communities by increasing access to clean drinking water, modernizing school infrastructure, and investing in our human service workers who have worked and sacrificed during the ongoing pandemic. This survey also shows that voters want investments to be targeted to ensure that low-income communities, communities of color, and the workers and communities impacted by the nation's transition to clean energy are not left behind. Equity must be baked into our efforts to build back better. The message is clear. Voters support this legislation and want it passed now. Uh, Coloradoans recognize not only the need for the provisions in the Build Back Better plan, but also the great potential for job creation, technological leadership, and a brighter, more fair, equitable future for our state and nation. Again, the results can be found at bluegreenalliance.org slash CO survey. There's a lot being considered in the Build Back Better plan. However, I think it's helpful as a Coloradoan far removed from Washington, D.C. to highlight a tangible part of what's being considered by Congress that's critically important to our state. Substantial investment in a modern, clean, resilient electric grid is critically important to Colorado and the West. Uh, to, to do this, to demonstrate this, we've invited some experts to our discussion today to, to talk specifically about what an investment in Colorado's electrical transmission system means, uh, what it could achieve, and why it's important. So with us today, I have three uh, valued partners uh, for our, of, of our coalition, uh, State Senator Chris Hansen, who represents District 31 in the Metro Denver area. Uh, welcome, Chris, it's great to have you. Um, 
Also, Jessica Halle, who is the Government Affairs Director for Western Resource Advocates, an environmental organization that uh, fights for energy, energy and climate policies and, and environmental policies in uh, surrounding five state region. Uh, and also uh, Rich Meisinger, who is the business manager for the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local Union 111. Uh, Rich uh, and his members uh, uh, primarily work on transmission infrastructure and, and, uh, and electrical infrastructure. Um, so welcome all three of you. It's great to have you here today. Um, uh, Senator Hansen, uh, would you please introduce yourself and say a little bit about uh, transmission and, and, and why you think that the Build Back Better plan uh, is important to Colorado, Coloradoans? Great. Well, thanks, Chris. Uh, really wonderful to be with everyone today. It's uh, you know the, the strong partnership that we've had over the last few years uh, at the state legislature uh, with Blue Green Alliance, with IBW, with WRA. Uh, really wonderful to celebrate some of that today and also to look forward uh, to the, the promise that is embedded in this Build Back Better plan that Congress is currently considering. You know, on, on the Colorado level, I think we've uh, really pressed and, and shown leadership, uh, especially when it comes to the transmission grid, the passage of Senate Bill 72 and other pieces of legislation over the last few years that put us in a strong uh, position uh, to move forward with uh, new investment in Colorado that's going to build uh, new infrastructure and create tens of thousands of jobs. And I think transmission grid is a really kind of linchpin and keystone in that investment plan, because without a uh, good transmission investment, without a strong, resilient grid, uh, we can't meet our climate goals. We can't uh, make the investments that we need uh, as part of this energy transition. And uh, the other thing that certainly would happen is that prices for customers would also be higher. So having a strong grid, having it be interconnected across our region uh, allows for really better, cheaper, faster for the customer for the environment and for the creation of, of great new jobs, uh, high paying, high skilled uh, union jobs in the state of Colorado. And so there's a great opportunity here. Uh, I think we've had leadership at the state level, uh, Colorado and some of our neighbors, New Mexico, Nevada, for example, um, but it, we really also need the federal government to act and to make investments in modern infrastructure. And this at the top of that list is a modern, resilient uh, power grid. And it's something we kind of all take for granted, you know, when we flip the switch, the lights come on, uh, but without a robust grid, uh, we could end up in the same boat as what Texas experienced. Uh, and Texas, one of the key problems there was that they were not well interconnected with their neighbors and had a difficult time sharing resources. We wanna make sure that doesn't happen in Colorado. We wanna make sure that doesn't happen in the West. Uh, so let's invest now to make our grid more resilient and create those, those great jobs that come with that investment. Uh, so really a pleasure to be a part of this today and uh, enjoy seeing all of uh, my partners at the Capitol as, as we continue to work on, on uh, legislation, uh, but to remind everyone of how critical it is that we have this federal investment to really supercharge and accelerate this work. So thanks for having me, Chris, and, and back to you. Thanks, Senator. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to be with us here today. Um, next, uh, Jessica Halle uh, from WRA, would you mind introducing yourself and then sharing uh, how you and WRA look at transmission issues and the federal investment opportunity? Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you, Chris, for inviting W Western Resource Advocates to join BGA, IBEW, and Senator Hansen to share these great polling results. My name is Jessica Halai, and I am WRA's Colorado Government Affairs Manager. Across the interior West, we work with legislators, utilities, businesses, and advocates to develop on the ground solutions to climate change. And one important piece in this puzzle is strengthening and growing the power grid itself, as well as expanding regional energy markets to ensure that the energy we need can not only move seamlessly, but also efficiently across the region. In 2019, Colorado was among the first states in the nation to set science-based targets to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 20% by 2025, 50% by 2030, and 90% by 2050 compared to 2005 levels. Achieving these goals requires decarbonizing our power grid, but the physical infrastructure of the grid is outdated, inefficient, and unable to meet the demands of the 21st century. Electricity infrastructure throughout the West is aging and is not fully optimized to support large additions of renewable energy and the integration of clean energy uh, technologies like electric vehicles. 
By funding transmission projects through the reconciliation package, Congress can seize a once in a lifetime opportunity to support increasing demands for electricity nationwide. This investment would improve the ability to deploy clean energy and increase the resilience of our energy system. Utilities currently do not have sufficient capabilities to monitor the larger grid, and there's little ability for correction, such as automatic rerouting, when sectors of the grid fail. A well-designed modern grid coupled with expanded regional energy markets can help prevent that in an automated and fiscally responsible manner. Federal investment in transmission will have a multiplier effect in our ability to cost effectively meet our future energy needs as Senator Hansen touched upon. The larger the investment, the greater the benefits of zero carbon energy to enhance grid reliability, foster regional diversity of energy resources and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Coloradans want Congress to invest in infrastructure while addressing the climate crisis. And as this poll shows, 60% of Colorado voters support increasing clean and renewable energy so that 80% of our electricity comes from uh, clean energy sources by 2030. This is not only possible with meaningful federal investments in transmission, but it's essential to act on climate to protect Coloradans' way of health, health and way of life. In the Build Back Better plan, Colorado's voters see an opportunity to address many interconnected challenges facing our nation in a way that creates good paying jobs here at home, helps communities that need it the most and drive down emissions causing climate change. It'll create jobs because investments in transmission are economic development opportunities. And this is especially true for rural communities who have traditionally depended on fossil fuel extraction and power generation for their economies. These communities cannot be left behind as this clean energy transition continues. The bipartisan deal is a start, not the end of what we need to build back better. Polling has been consistent and clear. A majority of Colorado voters support bold climate investment and believe that delay is unacceptable. Thank you to BGA and my fellow presenters for the opportunity to speak to you today. Thanks. Thanks, Jessica. I appreciate you being here. Uh, Rich, you and your members have worked on the transmission grid uh, for your entire careers. Um, can you tell us what the Build Back Better plan means to you and the investment in the infrastructure? Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, Senator Hansen and uh, uh, Jessica. Uh, and, and thanks for uh, in, in inviting me to this. So um, uh, as, as was said, um, sorry, I stutter. Uh, my name is uh, Rich Meisinger. Uh, I am the uh, bi business manager, fi financial secretary for uh, IBEW Local 111. We, we, we are a, uh, a large local, uh, a, a uh, utility and outside local um, with uh, right now prob probably about 4,400 members. Typically, we, we average around 4,100 members. Uh, I am a journeyman lineman by, by trade. I, I spent 26 years uh, working for a, a utility company, uh, building and uh, main, maintaining power lines prior to uh, coming on uh, uh, staff um, for the uh, uh, local union over six years ago. So um, with that being said, um, it is not enough that uh, it, 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 it's not enough that it, infrastructure investments create jobs. For these investments to be truly transformative, they must create good paying union jobs. To do that, we have to make sure that strong labor and domestic content standards are tied to investments in our nation's in, in infrastructure. Uh, this survey shows that voters uh, su support that. 75% um, of the respondents want assurance that major public investments include requirements that the products, technology, and materials used are made in America and that the jobs provide good pay and benefits. They also support pri pri prioritizing investments to communities that need it most, including low-income communities communities, communities of color, and communities impacted by the transition to cleaner, cheaper energy. Our members are ready to build back better. We know that we, we need a strong, 
reliable electrical grid to deliver the power people need across the, the, the state. A grid that wastes less energy and is ready for clean energy and is re resilient in the face of climate change. Our members are the best trained in this industry and we continue to train the best in, in, this, in, in this industry. Uh, um, in our training agreements with our uh, contractors, we have journeyman to uh, apprentice ratios to make sure there are enough qualified workers to not only make sure that the, the, the job is done right, but to ensure that the next generation of electrical worker learns how to do the job right. The e electric transmission grid is one of the most important infrastructures we have here in, in the US. As we add more clean energy sources to that grid, we need to make sure that the grid is built to the highest standard and that those building and maintaining the grid are the best trained. And the IBEW ensures that this will happen. Uh, thank you, Chris, and, and thank you, uh, everybody. Thanks, Rich. Thanks for being here today. And thanks for all your work uh, on behalf of your members. Um, we have uh, some, some questions that are starting to, to uh, roll in. Uh, through the chat. If there are folks uh, on the, the webinar that you, if you'd like to ask some questions, we do have time uh, for our panelists to respond to you uh, today. Um, but I'd like to, to get that started a little bit. You know, Senator Hansen, you mentioned uh, the need for a, a, an expansion of the grid the, and how, how the, the, it, the grid really helps. Uh, it, it needs to be resilient and actually to, to allow us to have a uh, um, the power of the future as we as we do things. Could you expand a little bit more about, you know, how how does the Build Back Better plan um, uh, actually cause that that grid to be, uh, you know, more beneficial for Coloradoans? You know, can you give us any other additional examples of what that really means to ordinary folks? Yeah, I really appreciate the question. I mean, I, I think um, with federal support, we can really accelerate the effort to move toward uh, regional interconnection. Uh, regional markets uh, in electricity, and that really uh, helps everyone involved. First of all, it lowers prices for customers over time because you get access to more resources and the lowest price resources uh, are more available across the region, and that pushes prices down uh, for everyone. Uh, so it's good for uh, industry, it's good for consumers. The second way it really helps is that it adds to reliability. The more uh, interconnected you are, the stronger the grid, uh, the less chance there is for something like what happened in Texas, where you get uh, a crazy weather event or a natural disaster of some sort knocks out one piece of the grid. If you have redundancy, if you have strong interconnection, that helps uh, to reduce power outages. And finally, uh, to Jessica's point, uh, and, and especially on uh, this, the goals that we've set as a state and to, to lower emissions, interconnected resilient grids help you to use uh, more efficiently uh, wind, solar, batteries, et cetera, that are, that are rapidly growing as part of our mix. Uh, and so in all three of those ways, uh, a stronger grid really, really helps create a win-win-win. Well, thanks, Senator. Uh, Rich, you mentioned a word that I thought was interesting. You know, you also said resilient. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, something there, and I, I thought I heard the word safe. Um, could you could you expand a little bit uh, uh, beyond you know what does a safe grid uh, look like and and how does the, how do your members um, uh, you know w w what role do, do your your members play in, in, in ensuring our grid is uh, safe and, and resilient? It takes for that question, uh, Chris. That, that that's one of the things we 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 actually pride ourselves on, right? When we build uh, um, anything, right? Uh, we, we, we always make sure that it's built to the highest standard. We, 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 most of, of, of the, the trans, transmission lines that are, are, are crisscrossing our nation now were all union built. And, and many of these lines were, were, were built back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and they are still standing now, right? And, and so um, because of population growth, because of um, now because of climate change and, and different things, we we, we need to start to upgrade uh, our grid, build it better, 
a, a bigger uh, it, it, and so our members are are trained to make sure uh, that that there aren't aren't any uh, uh, failures in that. So that w w it, sometimes in with big storms, uh, you 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 certainly uh, can't con control things there. But but it is certainly built uh, to w withstand storms. Our members take a lot of pride in that. Um, in in the they they also recognize as they are building it where 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 there's some some uh, 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 fire mitigation that may need to to happen right so that they can uh, tri trim trees or 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 bring in qualified uh, tree trimmers to ensure um, a, a, as the uh, uh, lines get uh, load on them and they sag down that they aren't burning uh, any trees or or causing any types of uh, uh, fires as we have seen uh, recently caused by by power lines. Yeah, thanks, Rich. I, that's something I I think that it's um, uh, always something to remember that uh, <laughs> resiliency of the grid isn't just about the power lines themselves, but what goes what's next to those power lines and making sure that it doesn't fall on top of them, cause a forest fire, or things don't you know, uh, you know, inadvertently have happened and that that takes training, it takes a lot of thought. Um, Senator, we have a, a question uh, in the, uh, from a, a, someone in the media uh, directed to you. Um, uh, can you discuss the federal legislation I mentioned, the Build Back Better legislation? Uh, what are the range of possibilities and uh, why and how do they really matter to Colorado just in, in some total? Um, beyond what you've already said. Um, and also for others, if you have any thoughts, uh, feel free to add on top. Yeah, thank you, I appreciate that question. I, I mean, I think we're in a, a kind of a fluid situation, but the, the first versions of uh, the reconciliation package all had items uh, that included transmission investment, as well as support for states on the technical side to help them study and better understand the, the options for regionalization of the grid. And I think both of those are gonna be important aspects. Hopefully both make it into the final version of the bill that makes it to the president's desk. Um, because I, I think the, the benefits for the country that we've talked about today are enormous. Um, and, and I'm pleased to see that you know, there's some bipartisan support for those concepts, for those ideas. Um, and you see everyone from you know, some of the big industrial players who, who are big power customers, to consumer advocates, to environmental advocates, to labor advocates, everyone seeing the upside of uh, investment in the grid. And, and I'm just really hopeful that both the technical support for states, uh, as well as direct investment into the grid are included in the final package. And, you know, they're looking at something that might be, you know, 60 to $100 billion total uh, across the country. And that's the kind of scale that we need. Uh, that is the size of the problem. Um, and it needs a, a federal uh, uh, aspect to, to solving it. And I am just really hopeful that that makes it to the final, final desk on the president's desk. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Jessica, a question for you. Uh, you, you mentioned the uh, uh, climate part of this, this discussion. Um, and, and the, you know, do are you, are you observing, are you hearing any other things uh, that are with part of the Build Back Better plan that Coloradoans might want to know as well um, that uh, go to address climate issues. Uh, is there anything that you have uh, been observing in particular or, or aware of? Um, well, the clean energy payment program is certainly something that we would want to highlight. Um, and it goes along with, uh, with this conversation about the transmission grid. That and then there's some really important investments, uh, in potential investments for just transition communities uh, that people should be kind of on the lookout for and, and watching to see what happens. And you know, this, the transmission, all of these things, like we just need it as big as possible because any federal investment that we can get can help to match and push our states to go further and help our local communities beyond what our state is able to do alone. Thank you. Uh, we have a question about the poll itself. Um, the, the question was, uh, the, uh, uh, when was the poll conducted? It was conducted this month uh, in September. It was uh, conducted from 
September 11th through the, the 15th. Uh, it surveyed uh, uh, folks from across Colorado. There was a minimum sample size of over 400 um, people in, in the poll. We, Blue Green Alliance and our, our partner uh, actually conducted the poll both in, in Colorado. I have a dog growling, sorry. Um, uh, in Colorado, uh, Arizona, uh, West Virginia, and Virginia, uh, key states that uh, are part of the energy transition. Um, we had uh, 400 registered voters in Colorado, uh, you know, fully fully go through the the, the poll, and um, and and, and uh, you know, it was is enlightening, and it was a good cross sample of uh, folks from, from uh, across the state and and a variety of different. Uh, voter types and et cetera, et cetera. Um, if there are any other questions, uh, please, I, I saw a couple of hands go up uh, in there um, that uh, we, we can't do that in the webinar type format. So if you have any questions, please throw them into, into the Q&A uh, part of the screen. Um, let's see, there's a bunch of stuff going on here. The uh, uh, Oh, the margin of error. You know, I, I'm I'm sorry, Marianne. I don't have that uh, with me right now. Um, the survey results uh, are on the uh, Blue Green Alliance website, um, and the that's that's discussed someplace in there and, uh, early on in the survey. If you wanted to to download that, um, so we're getting close to time. Uh, I, what I wanted to do now is really thank our panelists today. I really appreciate you being here, uh, and open it up to you if you have any closing remarks that you'd like to. Uh, to, to to say. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just say real really quickly here. Um, th this this benefits Colorado uh, by um, spreading the the cost across our nation, right? Of 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 rebuilding our tra transmission lines and, and and our grid, and, and frankly the. The entire nation is is going to benefit from this, right? So rather than having a, a central power plant like we typically do now, we are, we are going to have small energy um, pro, 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 producers, if you will, so, such as uh, solar farms and, and wind farms and um, maybe uh, molten salt uh, uh, storage uh, fa fa facilities uh, spread out through the the in entire US uh, to ensure our entire nation shares all of that energy. Uh, so on a cloudy day, maybe in, in Colorado, Wyoming picks it up. Uh, on a cloudy day in Utah, maybe Colorado can help them. So rather than the, the rate payers of, of one utility uh, picking up all of that cost, this shares the uh, cost across everybody. And so it, it it benefits our in, entire nation. Thanks, Rich. Senator or Jessica, either of you? Yeah, just a quick final thought. I think federal assistance and participation here is, as I mentioned, is really gonna accelerate our progress. And we've got state leadership now emerging across uh, the Western US, which is largely uh, not part of an interconnected grid. Really the only exception is California ISO. Um, and we need to expand that. We need to interconnect. We need to gather the benefits that we've talked about today. Uh, and federal uh, input, federal resources, I think, is really key to unlock and, and to speed that up. So uh, I really appreciate the chance to highlight that today with everyone. Yeah, and uh, I'll just echo uh, Senator Hansen and Rich's remarks. I, you know, some, someone who primar primarily works at the state level um, it's exciting to see this, you know, the thought of this moving beyond because we know that electricity is something we all use, we all need. We know that renewable resources are helpful, but you know, our, our challenges with the day and the time that you're using it by making our grid more broad and, and working between states and through states in creating these regional markets and in building up our transmission system, this is the way that we're going to be able to de decarbonize our economy, decarbonize our energy system, and move towards these important climate goals so that we don't burn up. Well said. That's a great uh, note to end on. Thanks, Jessica. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, panelists, uh, for being here today. Thank you, members of the media, for your questions and for attending today, too.
Again, download the poll results, uh, bluegreenalliance.org slash CO poll. Um, the, and also if you follow uh, Blue Green Alliance, search for Blue Green Alliance on Facebook and Twitter, we'll be sure to, to put the results out uh, through social media as well. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, it's been a great conversation and uh, look forward to, uh, to seeing you again soon. Thanks much.